Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to my little channel here on the interwebs. Hopefully, uh, this video doesn't get pulled from YouTube, but it'll be available on the uh, other sites, as in BitChute, Rumble, and Odyssey. So, look for it there if it gets pulled down. I guess you wouldn't be looking if it gets pulled down, but it may be pulled down because I am going to uh, rip into Joe Biden, our fearless, fearful coward of a president. That's right. He dropped the ball in Afghanistan. Now, the good news is we're out of Afghanistan. It doesn't look like we're coming back. Though our 20-year failure of a war, our Vietnam of our era is now at an end, which I could... I'm at multiple opinions and multiple emotions about this. I am glad that our one of our longest conflicts is over. However, I do not agree with how it was executed, mainly because Joe Biden dropped the ball. He dropped the ball hard. Uh, allies around the world are scratching their heads. Or if I was an ally to America, I'd be scratching my head. Does America really have our back if I was a foreign ally? This is the same thing that gets gets played over and over and over within our within our history. We go in gun blazing and as soon as we realize that we're not gonna win, we prolong it for long periods of time and then we abandon the people that we were there to protect. And Joe Biden, this is your failure. This is your Vietnam, this is your Saigon or Saigon moment where you failed not only the American people, but the allies around the world. You've told China, you've told Russia, you've told Iran that we cannot be trusted. This is a weapon that they're going to be used against us long into the future. We do not keep our agreements. Yahoo News, I normally don't quote them. Allies and critics are like on Monday condemned the United States over its 20-year NATO campaign in Afghanistan with leading German politicians slamming the operations as the biggest tobacco in alliance history. Stunned by the Taliban's lightning advance across the country after the departure of the Western troops, NATO allies have been left scrambling to evacuate their nationals as well as vulnerable Afghans. The Taliban's return to power and chaotic scenes as people desperately seeking to flee cabal on Western military aircraft has sparked criticisms of the two-decade operation which has cost the alliance thousands of lives and over trillions of dollars. Chancellor Angela Merkel said the U.S.-led NATO operations achieved less than planned, adding that she shared the pain of families of soldiers killed, as it seems right now, was all in vain. The deployment effectively ended the al-Qaeda ability to launch another operation on the scale of September 11, 2001 attack in the United States, but everything else has followed has not been successful, as it's not been achieved in the way that we have planned, Merkel said. Lessons must be drawn, she said. You must set smaller goals and think in such missions. Taliban return to power was particularly dramatic and terrible, she said. A terrible that millions of Afghans who have worked for a freer society and who, with the support of Western community, have focused on democracy and on education, on women's rights, she said in a meeting. In a meeting, her party top brass earlier on Monday, Merkel said that once the U.S. decided to withdraw, it was clear that other allies had to follow suit. No, you didn't. The decision was ultimately made by the Americans and the domestic political reasons were partially to blame, said by the Chancellor according to the people in the meeting. The troop withdrawal sparked, sparked a domino effect that culminated in the Taliban's return, said Merkel's whose countries provided the second biggest contingent of troops after the United States. The leader of her party had harsh words calling the entire Afghan Operation NATO, the worst disaster. You know, 
you didn't have to leave. Just because the United States were leaving doesn't mean that the UN couldn't step up. It couldn't mean that the European Union couldn't have stepped up. England could have stepped up. Germany could have stepped up. France could have stepped up. Well, I don't know about France. They're in a little turmoil. But yeah, the U United Nations could have stepped up. But are they too, too cowardly? that they need the United States presence to do their job? Are they too weakened of a military might to do their job? The fact that you're pushing the blame on America's withdrawal for your withdrawal is telling me that Russia can just steamroll over Germany, over the European Union with an instance because you, you don't have the will or the political powers or the will to actually save the Afghan people. Yes, I understand. I got multiple emotions, most multiple opinions onto the matter, but this sends the wrong message. Even Germany is weak. United States is weak. England is weak. The French are weak. Everybody is weak, except for China, the Afghan, or the Taliban, Iran. When I say that they're weak, they have no will to fight. They no longer have the ability to fight unless the United States is leading the way. This will be the perfect opportunity for you to step up to the plate, become a world power you, you once were for good, not just what happened in World War II. This was your chance of shining. Like I said in the, in the article, you were the second largest coalition force, second to the United States. Now, I understand that we poured a crap ton of resources and it was for nothing. I've seen on Twitter that husbands and wives were killed for nothing in a matter of a week. All their sacrifices meant nothing. Yes, in the last 20 years, America hasn't been attacked on a scale of 9-11. But I am angered by the by people's sacrifices being in vain. Although it wasn't in vain, we did get 20 years of peace of attack that hasn't happened on American soil. But how we withdrew also has me upset. We could have, I don't know, Joe Biden dropped the ball. He dropped the ball so hard that we're no longer a superpower. If the United States is considered a superpower, you should just remove the superpower. We may be a powerful nation, but we're not the superpower. China is now the superpower. China is now top dog in the world. And probably Russia too. Probably Iranian with the help with Pakistan combined. And now with Afghanistan combined, all those three countries are now a super coalition power. Terrorism won last week and continues to win because Joe Biden decided to withdraw after seeing the results of the Taliban taking city after city. He could have reversed course. There's nothing in Trump's plan that says that we had to leave. But you left. You left and it caused turmoil. Once you realized that the Afghan people couldn't stand up to the Taliban, you left them. You abandoned them. Our word means nothing anymore. Now, I do agree with some of the points in this speech where I made it. We cannot be fighting the Afghan fight for them. The, the people that wanted freedom, we, they had to want their freedom themselves. I understand that argument, and I am under that same opinion. If, we, if a co country cannot stand on their own, then we have no business helping them stand on their own against their oppositions. Of course, the Afghan military is also equally to blame to surrender so quickly or to flee so quickly. But apparently, the 20 years that we took building up that nation is up in smokes. The Taliban is now in control of Afghanistan, a terror country. If you think that 9-11 is not going to happen again, it is going to happen. And we gave them all the ammunition that they needed. We gave them a country where they could come and plan and include. That is what we pretty much did. We pretty much gave terrorists terrorism a win by the way that we withdraw. Afghanistan fell within a matter of hours, actually not even a matter of hours, probably a couple of days, within within a week after we started withdrawing heavily. 
I don't think that was Trump's plan. This blame is on Joe Biden. Joe Biden, Jimmy Carter is probably happy right now that he's no longer the worst president of the United States. You are the worst president of the United States. And we're not even in within one year of your president. So that means for the next three years, that's a year, three years and a half-ish, you're going to have to do something spectacular to become something better than what you are today. Because you're, you failed the world. You failed the Afghan people, worst of all. You failed the soldiers that have sacrificed their lives, their arms, the mental issues that arise from being a soldier in a war-torn country. You pretty much told them they didn't matter to by the way that you screwed this departure, this withdrawal of our forces. Yes, but I understand that we shouldn't be in a forever war. And I'm glad that we're gone. I just don't like how it was executed. I think we probably left a little too early. Um, that's just how I feel. Leave a comment down below what your thoughts are. Smash the like and subscribe button. But most importantly, let's make uh, Joe Biden a one-term president and have yourself a wonderful day, morning or evening.